Hello internet and welcome to a new tutorial. Today I'm making a video I would have loved to watch when I was starting out and it's about audio interfaces and how to choose one for electronic dance music production. Because there's so many options to choose from, it's not only the right time to start making music, but choosing something as important as an audio interface becomes really confusing. I mean, I get asked a lot on my Instagram about what audio interface to choose and what am I using. So I figured it's about time to make this video where I'll go about how I choose an audio interface and what my criteria are. Note that this video is about entry-level interfaces, meaning your first or second audio interface or the interface you'll take live with you to perform in front of people. These interfaces should be a great value for the money and can take a beating. Now that said, let's jump to the video and if you need to check the chapters, there's the timeline below. So let's start by why do you need an audio interface? I know that this is obvious for most of you, but let's say you're starting out and you're really confused. Well, I have two main reasons of why do you need an audio interface. First of all, higher quality audio. An audio interface is designed to work with audio applications, meaning it's capable of delivering higher fidelity audio conversion, basically from digital to analog, from the computer to the speakers, than what the sound card bundled with your computer is capable of doing. Second of all, lower latency, especially for Windows users. Windows handles audio in a really weird way that introduces a lot of latency, this becomes an issue not only for playback, but also for recording. I mean, let's say you're trying to record an automation from your MIDI controller. This becomes a huge issue because the latency is so big that recording is just impossible. And this is solved by an audio interface. On top of that, they comes with industry standard connectivity like TRS tracks, inputs and outputs, XLR inputs for your microphone, MIDI inputs and outputs, USB hub, some of them has ADAT or optical inputs and outputs, etc, etc. Now that said, let me show you my budget interface and why I chose it. Ladies and gentlemen, my choice of a budget interface, the Arturia Minifuse 4. And trust me, it was a really hard decision to make because of the similarities between the competitors, but the flexibility of this interface Face in terms of inputs and outputs and its technical capabilities made me choose it. I'm going to talk about the technical capabilities later on in this video, but now let's focus on the flexibility in terms of inputs and outputs. Now this interface might be an overkill if you don't need all of the inputs and outputs, but don't you worry, Arturia got you covered. You have the Minifuse 1 and the Minifuse 2, it's smaller siblings with less inputs and outputs. But for me, someone who uses a lot of hardware synthesizers and effects in his productions, I've needed an interface that would allow me to hook at least two stereo synthesizers or one stereo synthesizer and one reverb effect and this interface does it while still being extremely portable. Now let's check the inputs and outputs on this unit. So at the front we have two inputs in here that allows you to hook a microphone with phantom power or a guitar, a bass guitar or a synthesizer like in my case and you have 56 decibels of input gain and this is trust me huge and you have two headphone outputs in here now personally i don't need two headphone outputs but it's good to have them in here and you also have these really beautiful leds that shows you the levels of the outputs and before i forget there's this big volume knob in here which is really precise and not wobbly at all so you know that you won't blow your speakers by turning it to the maximum accidentally now at the back we have the rest of the inputs in here input three and four we have the four outputs output three and four are really special and one of the main reasons why I got this interface because they are DC coupled meaning I can use them to send voltage to external gear so for example in my case I can send automation from the DAW to my Behringer Nitron and control it with these outputs and for me this is a huge plus one because I didn't see any other interface at this price point that has DC coupled outputs and please correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section below next we have the MIDI in and out basic stuff next we have the USB hub in here and to be honest I've never realized I've needed a USB hub and an audio interface till I've started using this one and it's a huge plus one for this flexibility whether it's on the road or in the studio I mean in my case I was able to hook one MIDI controller and one synthesizer in my case it's the micro freak and it was able to power them no problems at all for sure it was hooked to external power because USB isn't enough to power the unit one MIDI controller and one synthesizer but still this is a huge plus one in terms of flexibility for this interface when it comes to technical specifications of an audio interface I look at two things, the specifications and the companion software. Starting with the specifications, there are two things to look at, the dynamic range and the noise floor. The dynamic range is pretty straightforward. It's the difference in volume between the highest or the loudest part of the sound and the quietest part of the sound. Let's say you're recording this crazy random arpeggiated sequence from your synthesizer and the sound is going nuts, like it's going high, then low, then high, then low. With a high dynamic range, you will be able to capture the full image 
of the sound coming from your synthesizer exactly like your synthesizer is producing it and then you can treat it in the doll the way you like and the same goes for a vocalist for example let's say the vocalist doesn't know how to control his voice and the distance between his mouth and the microphone with a high dynamic range you can record the full image of his voice and then again treat it with compressors equalizers whatever in the doll the arturia mini fuse 4 in here gives you 114 decibels of dynamic range for the line inputs or basically the inputs you'll use for your synthesizers and it's exactly as my main interface the rme fireface you see with like 500 euros of price difference between both of them i mean this is huge and you have 112 decibels of dynamic range for the mic inputs and this is more than enough to record any vocalist without any problems at all before we move on to the noise floor the arturia mini fuse 4 offers 110 decibels of dynamic range for its outputs or basically four decibels less than my fireface rme you see i mean like it's really close and if you think of it the cd quality is 96 decibels of dynamic range so you're pretty much covered for studio and even working on big pa systems no problem at all with this interface the noise floor Think of it as an indicator of how good the components of an interface are. The less noise floor you have, the better the components are. And in the case of the Arturia Mini Fuse 4, you have minus 101 decibels for the line inputs, minus 102 decibels for the microphone inputs, and minus 103 decibels for the main outputs. Basically, it's unhearable. I mean, I've tested this interface by recording really low signals and then boosting them by like 10 and 15 decibels inside of the door and there was no noise issues at all. And this reminds me of my first interface. It was a Focusrite 2i4 and the interface was way too noisy. I had to record everything like really loud, like right before clipping, else I'll get noise in it. This proves again the point that this is one of the best times to start making music production. I mean, getting this quality for this price tag when I've started making music is something I've dreamed of. Now let's talk a little bit about the companion softwares with audio interfaces because for me this is an indicator whether the brand really cares about their customers and the overall user experience or they're just trying to fill in the blanks within their product lines. So here's the Minifuse Control Center and it's one of the most intuitive softwares I've used for an audio interface. I mean at least at this price range. You have two main windows inputs and outputs. Here we have the frontal inputs, we can switch them to instrument inputs or to microphone inputs with turning on the 48V or the phantom power button in here. And as you can see in the bar in here, it tells you what each button is doing when you hover the mouse over it. And here we have the rear inputs, basically input three and four, we can control their gain, we can give them 24 decibels of gain or take out 24 decibels of gain, and we can link them so we can control both of them with only one knob. Next we have the output section and this is where the magic happens. Basically, we have three pairs of outputs. Yes, this audio interface has six outputs, not four, because there's a hidden loopback output in here. Each of the outputs is identical to the other. We can basically create our own mixes inside of it. So this is the main output, output one and two. I can add to that output three and four. I can add to it mono input two and stereo input three and four. And now I can actually control the level of each one of them. I can solo the one that I like. I can pan them the way I like and actually create my own submixes. This is a 200 euros interface and it allows you to do all of that and on top of that with the loopback output in here you can either set it to usb 5 and 6 and basically now it's just listening to whatever your computer is playing or you can set it to q to mix and here you can create your own mix of inputs and outputs and set that to the loopback channel and this is something extremely useful i mean i give classes over zoom and sometimes i need to mix the output of my door with my microphone with one of my hardware synthesizers and now i can do that with ease inside of the minifuse control center eliminating the need of any third-party software that i used to use to mix these inputs together and the last thing about the minifuse control center is this tool knob in here when you click on it you have the control over the asio basically the buffer size if you want the safe mode or not the safe mode just gives you a little bit more latency but it eliminates any pops or clicks if your computer is having problems with the buffer size you have the firmware version in here you can upgrade it from here too and you have the preferences of the leds in here the last thing i want to cover is latency and why it's really important to get an audio interface with the lowest latency possible imagine this you want to record your synthesizer in your track you want to be on beat an audio interface with the high 
high latency takes time to process the input signal and this means that you will hear your synthesizer late compared to the beat so you'll be always off beat and the experience will be really horrible and your job will probably be a waste but an audio interface that has a lower latency it means that you will be almost on time because it's processing the input really fast you will hear yourself almost on time so the recording experience is really good and the offset will be so little that it won't take you much effort to put everything on track in post-production or in your DAW. The Minifuse 4 in here offers at 512 buffer size 11.6 milliseconds of output latency and almost 14 or 15 milliseconds of input latency. This is almost instantaneous. I mean this is the exact output latency as my RME Fireface UC and four or five milliseconds slower and i think that it's huge to get such a performance from a budget interface i mean you can put it on stage and you wouldn't worry about latency i really think arturia did a great job on this one now with that said let's move on to the verdict now that you know what to look for in an audio interface and how i choose mine i think that the arturia mini fuse line is one of the best budget professional options out there i mean the build quality is superb the specs are amazing and to be honest i've been stress testing this interface for for the last couple of months and it was always performing at its best the only test that i didn't do with it was taking it live and perform in front of people using it but that would be the subject for another video for now let me know what audio interface are you using and why in the comment section down below and i'll see you in the next one